Hey everybody, my name is Ixi and welcome back to my channel where I analyze Nine Inch Nails music. And today I'm analyzing something that a few of you requested right where it belongs. This is one of those tracks that I never felt that strongly about, so I didn't spend a whole lot of time listening to it. But in the process of analyzing it, I kind of discovered how gorgeous it really is. So thank you for the suggestion. It's simple. It's mostly a piano ballad with some synthesizers. This is one of the more normal Nine Inch Nails songs. I don't think that's a bad thing. The fact that it's more normal and predictable juxtaposed with the lyrics makes it really work. It sort of sounds like he's saying, what if everything that you thought was real isn't real? I do think that he's using modes and that he modulates for the chorus. The other thing that makes this so much more predictable than a lot of other Nine Inch Nails music is that this piano melody doesn't change in rhythm. Da, 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 da on and on and on and on. And the bass line doesn't change in rhythm. So there's there's a consistency here. But the bass line is just alternating between um, an octave. Noteworthy, there are no drums in this song at all. So here's the verse. All major chords. So I think the verse is in D mixolydian flat six. I'm just gonna play the pitches of the melody of the verse without any rhythm. So he's basically going up the scale for the most part. There are a couple places where he skips a note starting on C, which is the seventh degree of the scale. Normally you would expect it to just start on the tonic. I think it's cool and it does catch me a little off guard every time when he starts here. You kind of get this like tension release, tension release sort of feeling all the way up for the most part. Tension, release, tension, release. That's a fourth, that's a fifth. And then when you get here, that's when the first chord change happens and it goes to the flat seven, the C major. Oh, and that's the same pattern as the very beginning of the melody, which is seven one. We have another seven one. Cool, I like that. Seven one is, it like starts unstable and then stabilizes, but to hear it in like a repeating pattern like that does kind of feel stable. This song might be weirder than I think. The other cool thing is that this melody sort of hangs over the bar line. One, two, and three, four, and five, six, and seven, eight. So because the melody starts on and three, then it's not gonna start over until the next and three. That means we're gonna end up here for one. And one, and three. You see, I don't know if I explained that well. He's sort of cycling through it. Now, if he did the same melody when he goes to the flat six chord, B flat, then it would sound like this. And that would be way more trenty than what he does, but he goes ahead and resolves that by going to the minor third of the tonic, which is F natural instead of F sharp. Because that's the fifth degree of this chord, B flat, D, F. If he sung the F sharp, then it would sound like this. And that's an augmented chord and it's very unstable and very nine inch nail sounding. But that's not, I don't think what he's going for in this song. So this is another way that he's telling us kind of where we are. We've got this, and we've got this. We just don't have whether it's major or minor. I think it's probably major because otherwise it would be. No, that, that's nuts. That's the three chord. That's weird. <gasps> hey, now, do you recognize that? If you watched any of my other videos, then you probably have heard this, this chord progression before, or this cadence. A flat major three and a, a major one. God, 
that's so dramatic and regal, you know? Man, I thought this was gonna be the quickest video ever because I was like, it's so simple. It's like, it's never simple. Now, I haven't talked about his voice at all because I almost forgot <laughs> that there was a vocal. I was so into the piano. Going up to the flat six, so he's reinforcing that part of, of Mixolydian flat six. Right, and there's the major third that also reinforces the fact that it's in Mixolydian. So you get that all with the melody. I love that. I have to say that is not what I would expect. I love the way he uses this flat major three to the one cadence. I couldn't find a name for it on the internet, which is crazy. So why don't we call it the resonance? I'll think about that one. Feel free to suggest something. Your resonance. Oh, cadence. More than oh, cadence. Okay, let's get to the chorus. Let me just go ahead and play the chorus for you. So here are the notes of this melody. So I think that this song is in D mixolydian flat six modulating to F major. So we're here. Now, if we were still in D mixolydian flat six, then this would be a minor four. I believe that we've modulated to F major already. So this would be a minor two in F major. And this, which is the last chord of the progression when we're in D, mixolydian flat six, is now the new tonic. Dun, dun, da, 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 da. Now we're, okay, so this is now major four. That's our new tonic. Dun, 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 dun. And that's our five. Two, four, one, five. That is a pretty typical chord progression. It's tasty. I like it. We stay here to go up to what was the flat six. It's the minor third of that chord. Ending there reorients us very nicely to this new chord and this new key. Yeah, they're tenths. It's the opposite of a suspension, guys. In this case, the chorus starts on and one instead of waiting till and three. I'm gonna play the full triad, the chord that's being implied by this bass line, so you can hear the harmonies that I kind of hear because I fill in the blanks that this bass line is leaving out. the way he's repeating these motifs and sometimes they're really really consonant sometimes they have tension it's basically him trying this out against and then what does it sound like against this chord also really beautiful, but different. And you get to re-experience this pattern of dissonant, consonant, consonant, dissonant. I'll show you what I mean. Dissonant, consonant, consonant, dissonant, dissonant, consonant, consonant, dissonant. Ugh. And then he breaks the pattern to go. It's almost playful and childlike. So innocent. It's very consonant in the in the chord, and that's like a, a sus four. But that's sort of setting you up for this. It 
so you're getting all these nice like points of tension and release tension and release and then this one which is i think the most satisfying one honestly sus4 to a major three then we're back here Which is what he's he's accentuating this A with the mel the piano melody. What if everything, if everything, everything you have the A again recontextualize as a major seven mm, major seven so now that i play that again i think what really makes this chorus so powerful in my opinion is this suspension at the end of the phrase followed by the tension of this it's this minor seventh against the g Like everything's right where it belongs, you know? Everything's okay. But then it's not. Even though this, again, has a more straightforward approach to uh, Western tonal harmony than a lot of other Nine Inch Nails, Nine Inch Nails, Nine Inch Nails music, it's still Nine Inch Nails. Because of the mixolydian flat six, for sure, the emphasis on that major three when you don't really expect it in the key given what else you've heard so far, and the emphasis of the sevenths. There's just a lot of sevenths. One little production thing I wanted to point out that I think is really cool. It sounds like mm, lo-fi. Like suddenly the sound was like all around me and his voice got way clearer and way more present and the bass got crunchier and more textured and it was almost like he's waking up not literally i mean metaphorically in the song he's like realizing something and so having everything sort of crystallize sonically it just feels like it supports that narrative what do you think oh my gosh i almost forgot about this there's this beautiful melody that comes in with the piano really high and he's singing along to it oh it's so so pretty Wow. This lower note is the third of the chord we are going to. I'm pretty sure it ends on that, which is really cool because that's not as resolved sounding as this. Because remember, we were in F. So even though he's not playing a chord to end the song, it's implied that he's ending on a minor two chord. That's very unstable. <sighs> That was really nice. I think that's all I'm gonna say for now about this song. Thank you so much for watching my videos. For all the new subscribers, hi. If you wanna chat with me, you can leave a comment. You can also follow me on Instagram at ixie.music. Sometimes I host polls there. I'm also on the Nine Inch Nails Facebook page, so that's a fun time. I'm working on something really cool for next week. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but I think you'll really like it. Mm -hmm.